here's a little behind the scenes view of some of the work being done on this 1964 Mercedes 230SL. Or maybe instead of behind the scenes, we ought to say under the scene. What we're doing is we put the hood back on and we're going to be taking some measurements from underneath. This is the view from inside the engine compartment with the hood in place. So you can see the power steering. Try to get better angles here. We have nice clearance there. You can see the brake fluid reservoir is really close, as well as the uh, master cylinder, I mean, the, you know, the brake booster is very close. We don't have the thing all the way down and latched even because of the straps, so it's just setting. There's really nothing on this side to interfere with anything. What are we going to do down here? Well, we're going to take some measurements. One, it's a good idea to, you know, have kind of the down low on things here. Know exactly how much room we have in this relatively small space. When you figure we got to put a couple controllers, um, those battery cells, and the motor, so many things have to go in here that, uh, I mean, just the batteries alone, that would be tight. You throw the motor and controller, controllers, two controllers in here, it's, um, it's going to be very snug. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure from different points. And typically, instead of writing it down, I just take a photograph. And I can't do that right now. But we'll take measurements from our, our reference string here across. We'll take measurements from the uh, motor mount right there. And so from there up. And from the anti sway bar, with another fixed item. And that's, you know, that takes us about as far forward as we want to go. But we can take measurements there too. So all those things then give us a good picture when we have the hood off and we're viewing from the above, we know what our profile is inside here underneath the hood so that we can make sure that everything's gonna fit the way we think that it's gonna fit and that we desire it to fit. Here we are underneath the back of the car. That's the differential you're looking at right there. Here's the right rear tire and shock. Here's the spare tire well that I spoke of in the last video also. You can see where it has been smacked a few times. Uh, wow, there's a hole all the way through it looks like. That's probably a drain hole. It has been smacked a few times. That's our low point. What I was talking about last time is this spare tire well is at an angle. So it's slanting from here outward. And so that restricted the area. If we have these cells drop down, you know, if they come down here, they would hit this well. They have to come out, you know, in this area. And we're not going to come down any further than right about here. But just to give you an idea what, what things look like underneath here, it's there's the filler neck came in through there. That's where the, uh, the cover was for getting to the um, uh, fuel level sending unit was. But it's a nice flat, it's almost square area here to uh, to work with.
just to give you an idea you saw the top side of everything here's the bottom side and when you're doing a conversion you have to be familiar with all angles all sides of the scenario so that you don't uh, do something and find out wow we've got an interference so again just want to uh, comment that you want to take a lot of measurements as well as a lot of photographs so that you can refer to them as you're doing your design work so photograph from every different angle and uh, include measurements and so forth that you can refer to so we've got our measurements so with that we got to figure out how to put those cells in there in such a way that they'll fit so here's how I would like to put them I like to have the batteries uh, vertically oriented this gives us one two three four five six seven eight eight times three is twenty four well I want to have at least 26 in the front, preferably 30. Well, what this does is this gives us 22 and a quarter inches. Well, we know from our measurements, we really only had about 22 inches. But here's the issue. Those figures are the total area that we have, not just, you know, battery space. We have to remember that we have a framework and containment that, that this has to fit in. Let's look at some other uh, orientations that might work. Again, it's, it's, this is the way I prefer to have the cells. It's like this. But we can go like this. And we can go like this. But doing things, you know, where they're non-vertical creates some issues also. And so, but first let's just try some different uh, uh, formats here and see what kind of... Uh, margins that gives us and see what our options might be well here's another arrangement what we have is we have these on their side and we have them stacked four high and that puts us at 11 and a quarter inches so it gives us more mar margin than when we had them standing like that because we don't need any additional for clearance on our interconnects. So that works. And we taper down as we come forward. You can see we've got four, four, and three. So as we come forward and the hood drops down, we have more clearance. Here we're eight, eight and a half inches. And then coming forward, we're at 21 and a quarter. And we had 22 inches coming this way before we needed to jog down. So these then would be, uh, when installed, the top here would be the same height as this one. And we can do that, we can drop down. The overall length is 26 and a half and we had 28 to uh, to play with so it looks like in this format it would work but doing this has some of its own issues one is the interconnects are not as tidy uh, because we have some on this side some on this side and some on top so uh, that's not quite as clean in this video, we've been talking about kind of behind the scenes or more accurately 
under the seam. And so we've looked under the hood, we've looked under the trunk. Well, behind the seats, there's a deck back here. There's some speakers. And there's a deck. Let me see if I can put some light on it. There's a pretty good size area behind the seats. But it's just what I would call a package shelf. Just let's take a look underneath. Just another shot of what it looks like behind the seats. So let's pull out the one seat and take a look closer. So here's a shot with the passenger seat removed. So now I'm going to show you what happens. There's a thumb screw right here that I've already removed that allows you to pop up this compartment right here. And we'll just simply remove it out of the way and expose what's underneath. So basically this is the uh, thoroughfare from front to rear. We have the charger, the charge port, and the, uh, and the battery pack in the rear of the vehicle. So we have cabling that's running front to rear. What we have are two of our high voltage lines coming and going from the rear pack. This line right here is actually coming from the front pack, goes through this fuse and to the rear pack. And then the negative most point in our whole system is in the rear pack and it's coming back and comes here through our shunt and, and forward to our controllers and you'll see that in a later video. So we've got the shunt back here. We have one of the fuses. This is the pack fuse that splits the pack basically in half, 24 to 26 cells. We have one of the two DC to DC converters back here. We have uh, diode protection for the converters. We have relays that turn the two of them on and a terminal strip. So the other one is under the other side here. I'll just pop this up and out of the way. And so there's the other DC to DC converter. We're running two in parallel in this setup and that's because we are running, uh, this thing has a, a nice amp already installed uh, in the trunk there's also power steering um, and those are the two things that probably draw the most juice uh, we we also have an auxiliary battery but just a quick little view of something that normally will not be seen these cavities are large enough that uh, the uh, DC to DC converters won't get too hot or anything and so um, this is where they're stashed Normally you would want those near auxiliary battery and the reason for that is that's what they do is they maintain a charge on the auxiliary battery and they share the load and so you typically want to put them close to the auxiliary battery and on most conversions uh, we find that that is possible. This particular one we are really going to be hurting for space in the engine compartment and so uh, as well as the trunk and so this was just a, an ideal spot to put them uh, because this was just wasted space that really has no other use as far as uh, the owner would be concerned. So this allows to stash these things in an area that's easy to get to if you ever needed to service and yet totally out of the way and out of sight um, in your daily life. So even though we're waiting on parts still, and I mean critical parts like the motor adapter and coupler, 
doesn't mean that there aren't things going on behind the scenes. I mentioned in a previous video about the spare tire well being the lowest point. It is by far the lowest point on the car. And when we're done, it will still be the lowest point in the vehicle. The battery racks will not hang down near as low as that. I thank you for watching and hope you'll join us again next Wednesday. Hopefully we can get it out on Wednesday. Just want to let you see uh, kind of uh, an add-on to last week's what to do while you're waiting. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you again next week. And until then, hope you enjoy the drive.